Excellent, excellent. I think you got it. See, the, the biggest challenge actually, we, we always think the bicycle is mainly for commuting, all right? Here, by eliminating pedals and chain, they created this bike for balancing. People to learn, kids to learn balancing on their own, right? You don't need to, like you know, your parents don't need to run behind like you know, how you did in the past. Maybe side wheels were there, but still people used to, like your parents used to come behind you all the time, right? This is how actually like, you know, by eliminating something useful, you created a new segment altogether. That is what the key here. See, it's not about eliminating the pedals and chain and selling it less, no. You are creating a segment which is un, like, you know, the, the, which is unsurred by the other manufacturers. One more important thing actually when you really look at the bicycle manufacturer had all the capabilities to manufacture this or not. Do you agree? Right? The thing is, with the skills what you have, you created a new segment which is sold at higher price. This is not going to be, you be sold at lesser price because it's a new segment altogether. So innovative thing, right? This is how they come up with the, the bicycle without pedals and chain. Now, wheels. Can we eliminate wheel? One wheel? First, what do we need to do when you're, when you're playing with functional innovation? When you're eliminating, what you should do first? First, eliminate. Then you think what will happen? Can we eliminate one wheel? No? How many agree that we can eliminate? Awesome, awesome, awesome. F fantastic. Like, you know, everyone gets 10 points who raise the hands, okay? This is a unicycle. We have seen in circus, right, in your ring, like, like you know, the ladies coming and forming new formations with a single unicycle, right? This is a very popular game, actually, like, you know, the sport in, in the U.S. It's called unicycle. Okay, they have only one. Now, can we eliminate both the wheels? Can we do that? What will you do? Both the wheels. Eliminate the, both the wheels. One you eliminated, now both. Anything comes to your mind? Chain? Only the chain? Friends from there who are sitting in the dark? What you can do? Can you eliminate both the wheels? First, do you agree that both the wheels can be eliminated or not? How many say no? Rest of the people who are not rising, they agree that it can be removed? Yes? Wonderful. I love that. Okay? First we remove, then we'll think what we can do with it. Okay? This is what everyone loves it. Everyone is having, after COVID, everyone is having in their drawing room today. Generally, what we do, we dry towels, bed sheets. Very expensive dryer at home. You agree? Right? So this is actually a bike which is not for commuting. It is for fitness. You get into a new segment, it's fitness. People are willing to pay more. Always we think by eliminating the feature, you're going to reduce the price. By eliminating the feature here, you're going to increase the price and then get into a new segment where there is no competition possible or less computation possibly. All that we are really trying to do with the existing knowledge as a bicycle industry, just imagine that. You agree? Can this be manufactured by a bicycle manufacturer or not? All of you agree, right? All of you agree. This is what we need to really look at. When you really eliminate, don't look at the cost. Look at that new value which comes out of it. Okay? This is how it is. Now the saddle, seat. Can we eliminate seat? Fantastic, like you know, they're already they're moving towards functional innovation. That's what I love it. Okay, so can we eliminate saddle, seat, all of you? What do you think? Let us go ahead with it. First we'll eliminate, then we'll see what happened actually. What is that? Ma maximum we're not able to sit. 
that's all right then let's see that this is a loppy fit which is a dutch people are very fond of by like you know cycling this is a e bike which is which runs at 25 km per hour you can see a uh, uh, loppy fit in in youtube there is a video also you can just uh, do a lot of research around that okay this is basically a treadmill bicycle as you walk more on the treadmill it will charge your bicycle uh, battery then you can go at a high speed of 20 25 km more around the city so it's basically a walking cycle possibly people are walking on the cycle and then it goes on a higher speed this is a bicycle which doesn't have pedals chain like uh, the sorry where the handlebar chain frame le wheels nothing it is sold at uh, some 2 rupees in le in 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 amazon no handlebar no frame no wheels no chain no saddle just imagine elderly people want to use early morning they can be put behind like you know the below the cart they can pull up and then that's a bicycle for them it's a small physio the orientation of the wheel itself has changed now it become parallel now right that means no handlebar no frame no saddle no chain no pedals but the thing is you need to really look at the new technologies around now here the maturity of technology comes into existence the bicycle man manufacturer need to rethink the new products in this particular category this is how organizations need to really keep on rethinking their own products and services even going to the next level not only looking at their own existing level how to really look at next level because new generation requires new taste and new uh, um, requirements this is a simple like you know the uh, uh, functional diagram of a toothbrush brushing system what we discussed the qh case right so the user holds the handle handle fixes the bristle bristle applied toothpaste is applied to the bristles bristle brushes the teeth toothpaste does two functions cleans and whiter uh, whitens the teeth toothpaste also freshens the mouth and water rinses the mouth this is how i brush i don't know how you brush but you can also draw your own functional diagram according to your brushing actually okay this is how the simple way of understanding the toothbrush actually in system right now you can work on each of this category this is a toothbrush uh, which is a ai based motorized toothbrush it can you don't need to put a pressure on your teeth because you lose enamels and all so this is a brushing system which tells you how much clean is your teeth through ai app you can see even like now this will be linked to the insurance company also the insurance company will say if you don't brush properly i'll increase your premium actually like you know, i'll increase your premium right this is how you can really go to the next level of business also right so this is what um, the example from there and this is a bristle bristleless brush actually instead of bristles they have a massager and it is a new category because it's basically to massage the gums actually all that they eliminated what is that they eliminated here bristles right they replace with a massager with a gyro sponge okay next this is a brush without a handle you just hold on your mouth and then your brushing is done okay this is a brush which doesn't have a handle it is not hard instead of hard it is soft they eliminated the hardness just chew and then spit it and then your brushing is done just generally when you're traveling and all you can use this possibly this brush right no water no handlebar right so in the process we can look at we will talk about the supermarket right we we discussed about the supermarket case also right so this is a supermarket like uh, what is that you can eliminate in the supermarket billing counter that is where actually you lose in like interest by the time you have to wait for half an hour to 45 minutes in billing counter you drop the basket and walk out also that happens many a times right so that was a big problem and then even we work with some of the uh, companies and then these are some of the challenges we we also try to solve what's happening hey prabhu kya hua there oh fantastic 
<coughs> so um, here the one is actually like you know the biggest challenge is uh, uh, the checkout counter. One is the people have used RFID scanners, kiosk, and then even business analytics. When to really go to the shops? Then there is no like another you know, crowd. You can really look at the analytics. Then you can decide when to really walk inside the sh store actually. And other disadvantages in the shopping, like you know, the in the in the in-house, I mean to say, like another you know, physical shopping is one is actually the shoplifting is a big challenge. Like now people steal things actually, even rich people will steal. That is a habit actually. And also customer interaction. Many times you are not happy with the customer interactions, right? So here the error handling also, because whatever the price on the product is is something else in the in the in the system, right? It's mismatching. You're unhappy, and then you're arguing with the customer with the with the billing counter. All these things happens, right? So this is what some of the challenges which was there actually, which we also tried to solve uh, along with some of the companies. As a, one of the major company, I mean to say, okay. Finally, this is what the new in this particular space. Amazon Go. This is a store. There is no checkout counter, no lines, no checkout counter. Can you imagine? The moment you go in, it detects your credit card. You can lift anything and put it in your basket or put it in your pocket. It will be billed automatically. Even a shoplifter will get billed. Just imagine how they are really solving the problem. So many cameras, it will not allow you to steal anything. If you lift from the shelf, it detects the product, it detects the credit card, and then it gets added to your bill. So this is how it is. So today, like, you know, even Big Basket wants to do that. Actually, when you are a, who is sitting in the doorstep? I always say that, right? Who is sitting in the doorstep? Competition, right? So when you're a leader, people are always following you. Now the Big Basket also wants to do the same thing. So business model innovation, this is a called silk. This is called soy milk. Because people have allergy to the milk. Some kids have allergy to the milk. They use soy milk. So without having a milk from the cow, they're competing with the dairy products. And this company, they sold to Dan One for $10.4 billion. Just imagine they are running a dairy product without cow. Okay. Dell, he all made money by eliminating the middleman. Possibly even Amazon would have learned from him only. We don't know, right? This is amazing. Budget airlines, right? If you are traveled by air because it's cheaper today, because we, we use budget airlines, right? No meals, in flight, no in flight entertainment, no re uh, pilot uh, convenience, recliner seats, no recliner seats, tra no travel agent, no seat allocation. Like, you know, you can go and sit, like how you take a down get a bus to local Haveri or something, go and get into the any seat and then wherever it is empty, you can go and sit. This is how actually, the thing is, all that they're trying to reduce is the time taken to really onboard and then off deboard the customers actually from the plane because they can have one more trip, additional trip. As long as the flight is in the air, they're making money. The moment it comes to the ground, they're losing money because you need to do a lot of checks and all those stuff and then pay for the air, airport, everything comes into picture, right? This is how actually, like, you know, the budget airlines are really inspired. Uh, um, even like, you know, the Southwest Airlines is very, very popular. Like uh, there, the, 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 even, even the cabin crew and all will be very happy. Like, you know, you, you always see very uh, politely uh, welcoming you and all the uh, rest of the airlines. There they'll be dancing, jumping, and then making you to take seat anywhere you want, all those things actually. So your, your energy is very high in Southwest Airlines. This is in, when you really talk about movie, I just wanted to really, to make it easy for you to understand the function diagram. This is how the function diagram of a movie looks like. Why we watch movies? One is actually the purpose of the movies. One, you need to bring joy, and also like inspiration from the movies possibly, or maybe like, you know, the excitement actually you get from movies, right? If you look at movie function diagram, these are the components of the movies, comedy, romance, thriller, actors. You have a music, songs, dances, location, 
language is 2D or 3D, right? Adults or children to whom you are focusing. Special effects, if today's all movies are special effects, having special effects. Dialogues, okay? And story. Can we eliminate something here? St you can eliminate story. Some movies don't even have a story. You got it? I don't know why, why, is it, not a, why it is a box office hit. It will be a question mark sometimes. Right? The, no story in the movie, but, right? Like you know, just a hero come, gets down from the Jeep and gets into the Jeep, gets down from the Jeep and gets into the Jeep, and finally the movie is a blockbuster. Right? This is what is happening in some of the movies, right? So let us look at dialogues. Okay, can we eliminate dialogue? What is that? Mr. Bean, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, who said Mr. Bean? Who said Mr. Bean? Then get one shot, please. Charlie Chaplin, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, Pushpa Kavimina, many international awards also. Okay, why you need to really remove the language? Why? What is, what is that really it gives? What is the impact? It increases the audience base, right? Today you see, you watch K-drama, only subtitles you can understand, that's all. You are right, right? Love it actually. People love it because of the picture quality. It's so neat. Aesthetic, absolutely aesthetic. Especially if you are in a fashion industry, you love it, right? So this is how actually the new, new generation Right? Even um, <coughs> this, this movie is like that, the classic example. Maybe the inspiration may be from the Charlie Chaplin uh, um, kind of movies. Mainly, basically, to really expand the reach. Okay? Even R.K. Lakshman is a very famous cartoonist. He also had a systematic way of thinking, creative way of thinking. He said, like, you know, the each time there is a petrol price hike, I remove one body part, it reduces my burden. Even cartoons were produced using a systematic methodology of using an eliminate tool, right? So this is how you can really come up uh, with great ideas, okay? So what we do is in companies, actually, we, we use these techniques, uh, run through for 30, 40 minutes like this. Then we take up the functional diagram of their products and services, okay? Like how you have seen the bicycle and then the, uh, the functional diagram of the a toothbrush and toothpaste system, dental system, we do the, all the research and then including the patents, publications, what all happened around, what competitors are doing, every insights have been brought in. Then we go through this ideation, then we sit and then come up with a, like another you know, th th thousands and thousands of ideas and then try to like another you know, funnel down those ideas actually. This is one of the example from Titan. We had four different stories actually uh, from Titan. Uh, one is on the retail, one is on the e-commerce, one is on the manufacturing, one is on automation. Uh, we generated more than 6,000 ideas in the company. We funneled down to top 20 projects, okay? And one breakthrough innovation happened. I mean to say, innovation takes a lot of, like, you know, the energy and time, and then we need to really look at all the possibilities. It's not that, like, you know, with one idea overnight, you get a, like, you know, magic wand, it's not going to happen that way, okay? And this is the amazing project which we did at New Wells, actually. They make all the uh, um, uh, beautiful uh, uh, products like uh, Parker, Reynolds, um, Waterman, uh, all these pens are manufactured, I mean to say, uh, like another, you know, belongs to them actually. Even rubber made, and they have thousands and thousands of products like how Professor was mentioning in the morning about like 3M, they are, a two, they are also a 3M in US actually. Sharpie, all the markers, sketch pens. They are very, very popular in US actually. It's an amazing brand actually in US. So we work with them actually like, uh, uh, this was completely online. Uh, people from multiple countries participated actually using the Miro board. Um, now you can all do the post-it postings and like another you know, post-its, you can use it in online. There are tools available. There are platforms available to really ideation. We do use uh, one of the tool called Idea Scale where like another you know, people from different location can participate, put their ideas, merge their ideas, put their ideas, encrate their ideas, merge their ideas, all those things can be done online actually, okay? So this is, how, and then we, the 1,359 ideas from there, we brought down to 93 ideas in first level, second level 48 ideas, then we came up with a nine new ideas which turned into products actually. 
okay? This was very, um, um, like, you know, with very close to my heart because I myself is a pen collector. I have more than 1,000 pens uh, uh, collections. So when we did this project, actually, we tried to really look at what kind of pens are available in the market. And uh, we also picked up the each pen and then identified what are the best three features in this pen and what are the worst three features in this pen. Then we identified and we created a lot of data around that. Just imagine, right? This is how you can really create like you know, the more knowledge around any products and services, okay? So, and also we also interviewed more than 300 children. And then the kind of insights what we received was amazing. Like you know, the one of the kid mentioned, like you know, the first we did actually, like you know, the research in schools, how many kids are fighting with geometry box? That was the, and how many got hurt in the last one year? And then we, all these things were measured. We saw that like, you know, after even like you know, almost in 100 years now, since the geometry box was invented, um, still the geometry box is not safe enough for the children to use. You agree? Right, that there is a lot of opportunity for innovation. And we asked like you know, kids actually, right? Uh, th when we did this project, we looked at there is a lot of opportunity on the geometry box also, okay? And when we asked the kids actually, what else we can really innovate in this space? People said, hey, why do you really need a plastic cover for this pen? Why do you need, really need a cardboard cover for this pen? Make a dispenser in our college, okay? This is the kind of ideas which is outside the pen. This no designer can think sitting in a design office. Can you imagine? This is what the insights mean, talking to the real people, understanding from, like, you know, the ideas can come from any, anyone. Definitely, when, when we were kids, actually, we were more creative, right? When we were grown, we lost that creativity. Even today, like, you know, the, recently, I, I gave a small talk for school children, like, you know, the nursery school. I was amazed to see the classroom there. Like, it was so colorful. Completely walls are painted. And then, like, all the animals, fruits, like, you know, all, all desks were like a, like one is like a banana, one is like a pineapple, one is a strawberry. This is how the desk looks actually. And all are sitting like in a circle, like so that they, each one kid can see face to face. Amazing. And then I go and do teach in the IAM actually. White walls. And then we think like we, we expect them to be innovative. This is what actually, I'm, why I'm, what I'm saying here is before you join the workforce and retire, the kid born today is going to join the workforce. You agree? You agree? So this is what the competition means. The competition is not sitting outside. The kid which was born today is going to be your competitor because you still you'll be in the workforce when, when the kid is coming to the uh, uh, job market. You agree? So this is how that competition means. So pick up the ideas, best ideas coming from anywhere actually, okay? So this is an amazing quote by uh, Daniel Kahneman, he has written this book called uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. There is a video also you can watch. There is something called Google Talk, okay? So Google has captured a lot of books and best authors and great thinkers in the world. They created at least one hour talk uh, um, which they, they used to conduct every month in Google. Okay, there are many talks which is there in the public domain. Uh, please keep happy, have a habit of watching at least one talk every week or something at least. So that you'll, you'll watch 52 talks and then your thinking will really expand, okay? He said, you need tenfold increase in the pursued value to be accepted. That means you people, if they want to really accept your products and services, you need to have the 10X impact. Without that, people don't appreciate, right? There's a huge difference between the products which is made by Apple and then the products which is made by other companies. You agree, right? Right? So this, that's what actually the 10X impact means, like you, know, the, you, you need to believe. So what we do is actually like, you know, the, when you do the same thing, like you know, after the ideas are generated in the workshops, you need to funnel down the ideas, right? You need to funnel down the ideas. What we do is actually the, for the first level, if you're very, very much solving the existing, pro existing system and existing problem, then you, it is core to your business. For survival, you need to do that. To really stay competitive, it's like a being in the treadmill. To stay there, you need to run, right? So here, the, for survival, you need to constantly keep innovating on your products and services, 
right? We also see a lot of changes happens in your own apps, what you're using day to day, right? Right, each, e each month it is changing in some or other way. Or they say that download the new app actually. <laughs> right, this is what, because they are updating all the time. And the, to stabilize, basically it's new to the company. That means your competitors have already done it. If you don't do it, you are going to lose, you are going to be the loser in the market. So you need to really work on that also. That is new to the company means you don't need to copy. If you copy, you will not get the same results, definitely. But you need to be intelligent to implement differently than the competitors. You need to find the, the like, you know, the, what all the misses there, try to fill that gaps here. You need to implement this idea from the different industry altogether, but how do you, re how differently you're doing, going to do it? Or maybe learning from the other industry altogether, right? In 30 minutes, we get pizza. In 30 minutes, we'll not get ambulance in Bangalore. What is important for us? Ambulance, right? How we can learn from pizza shop to really set up our logistics in, in hospitals. This is how actually the industry is changing, right? So even like, you know, the, I was talking about during the lunch also, like, you know, the, uh, recently I, I ordered a, a ice cream. Uh, he delivered within five minutes. I was shocked to see that, like, you know, how someone is able to deliver within five minutes. Before you cancel it, also someone is coming and delivering the ice cream. Then I realized the shop is only third building from my house. It's called dark shop. You'll, they'll not be having any board game, nothing, but they'll have items there and then they'll keep distributing the ice creams. Then I, I, next time I thought, why, why we need to really order through Swiggy, directly go there and then uh, uh, get it. Then he said, please book in the Swiggy when I went there. I was shocked, why? Because his en entire inventory is managed by Swiggy because they are the one who are deciding what offer should run next day. Okay, at the same time, he doesn't want to have any cash with him because anyone can manage the store then, right? This is how actually the new generation stores are working differently. The competition for them is not that someone wants ice cream in five minutes. They want to stop you going to the nearest store in five to 10 minutes and get the ice cream. That means who is a loser? The Kirana store is a loser. You agree? So I mean to say this, all this quick commerce is also is really transforming. They are going to be more successful in the going forward, right? The new to the industry is basically something which we have not done in the past, like learning from other industry like hospital, right? The ambulance, what we learned. And very importantly, the moonshot, like, you know, you go and watch a James Bond movie, get inspired, and then want to really develop something similar uh, to the society, right? This is how you can look at it. So this is a classic example, like, you know, from uh, Facebook, actually. You can really see that you can correlate with the, my previous slide and here. Uh, if you see in the core, like, you know, the, for survival, the Facebook was the one which was making earning money. If you really look at in Horizon 2, there was WhatsApp and Instagram actually, okay? Next you see in 2018 in conference, you can see the Instagram has already overtaken Facebook. You agree? Now it has become a core to the company actually. So this is how the, like you know, the, st the different stages of innovation in large companies happen. They keep really looking at actually what can really the next product which can take over the, the biggest product of ours actually. This is what the new streams of revenues actually. Today, people may not use, especially your generation definitely will not use Facebook. It's outdated, absolutely, right? Even WhatsApp is also outdated for you, right? The only, you are all in Discord, I know, right? Discord is the one which you use regularly, right? Discord is the one, apart from that, uh, Instagram, right? So uh, every dance and every TikTok and all, like, you know, it will go through the Instagram, right? right? This is how. So this is how actually, like, you know, organizations really drive innovation. So design thinking actually which is uh, uh, which is becoming part of a bigger perspective of any organization today one is actually they use extensively for idea generation and also innovation doesn't mean that it's only a one single jigsaw puzzle it has got multiple jigsaw puzzle actually which you will experience is a whole week actually maybe industry academia partnership like people like us from industry come and then talk about it and also you have a prototyping and POC facilities, digital manufacturing, incubation centers. You have a technology portfolio creating by your own colleges, co-developing and course licensing with the companies, applied research, and then accelerated design development, digital transformation, 
even like you know, innovation tools and techniques like functional innovation, you can really bring all these aspects, then there is a huge opportunity for innovation to happen actually. Okay, with this actually, the, my first part of the, like you know, the uh, uh, talk is uh, over and then the next part is actually, I'm going to talk about the generative AI, uh, which is a part of the, um, like you know, which, which we published a paper on HBR. Okay, so uh, please uh, move the slide to the next presentation. Then they will take me. Huh? The second presentation. If you have any doubts, friends, actually, I'll be very happy to take few questions. Then we'll run quickly, and then I have till 4.30. Have any questions on so far on innovation? Please feel free. Please feel free. Any questions? How many of you are from computer science here? How many of you use generative AI for programming? Very good, very good, excellent. Because uh, I was in IIT, IIT Bombay also like uh, maybe uh, four, five weeks back actually. Um, I asked the same question actually. Um, in my session actually there was a, a rank three AIR. Even, even there they use extensively generative AI for programming. You need to learn the compiling more now, today. You agree? Because since you never coded, compiling will be a challenge for you because now someone else is coding for you. Done? Okay. So good, actually. If, um, so how was uh, your learning of uh, first session? Now you all of you agree that innovation can be systematic or you have to wait for the apple to fall. Can it be systematic? All of you agree? What is the one tool we learned today? Eliminate. Eliminating something useful, eliminating something non-beneficial. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay. What else you learned today in the first session? Any one, one, one point? Any other point? Solving a problem, solving an existing problem and finding so a solution. Absolutely. And understand deep, having a deep understanding of customer challenges, right? So you looked at how about solving, also how to solve the user problem, both. Okay, user and system problem, both. Fantastic. And design and design thinking. Now we are very clear, design and design thinking. Yes. Design is more about individual. Design. design thinking is all about teaming and team, teaming right? And team. Design thinking is all about storytelling, right? Design, uh, design thinking is all about storytelling. Design is all about engineering and art, Perfect. right? Here, engineering, art, and business. All three will come into picture. Design thinking is all about experience. Design is all about products, right? Clear all of you? Fantastic. We'll go to the next session. Is it going interesting for all of you? Yes, sir. Afternoon 2.30, it's difficult, I know. Okay, good. But still, all of you are awake. You can sleep opening your eyes all the time, okay? <laughs> you can sleep. Hmm? Okay. So good, actually, this is uh, uh, very relevant for you, friends. Um, if you're not used generative AI, I suggest start from today. 
okay you already you're late by one year one year and say almost six months one year and four months okay already G chat gpt has celebrated its birthday also right so if you're not learned you're lagging globally not only in davangere okay so generative ai the new age of human creativity what happened more clearly ah. so this is for something amazing happened at uh, you know mantra uh, this is harvard business review actually harvard business review is 100 years old business management number one business magazine in the world if you get featured in this actually it's something a remarkable thing happened i say like you know the we always like you know joke ourselves um, it's easy to get a nobel prize but not get a publication in hbr because hbr press like you know the publishes only six articles i mean i mean to say like you know in a month and then in a whole year you get only six opportunity to be in the cover of the hbr you agree but nobel prizes are more sometimes right so this is what actually the scenario i always used to have a dream actually like why i'm saying this is actually whenever i go to trips on like one of the business trips i used to go at least one hour early to the airport do some window shopping in the airport watch all the magazines free of cost read all the magazines free of cost read at least some half a book in some free of cost and buy one book in a trip and then finish off the same book by the time you come back home this is how actually i built my library from last 20 25 years actually so i have more than collection of some thousand books and then sometime earlier i used to think that that can be a gift to someone actually today no one wants that gift actually everyone wants a tab right this is what the high also changed over a period of time right so today possibly i may be presenting to a business school now it's given to the, my company so this is how actually like you know i used to spend time and then i always used to wonder actually we need to be there in this kind of top magazines in print page some day and that happened after 13 14 years actually yeah oh no 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 absolutely no 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 absolutely thank you so much i really appreciate that no 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 so thing is the yeah why i'm saying this is uh, thank you thank you so much sir. i really appreciate so you the thing is all that you need is you need to have that aspiration that's it okay and anything is possible. And then last 100 years, we are the only one who published in the cover of the HBR, not even any of the top professors in around India. So I mean to say, this is what you can do, I'm telling you. Doesn't matter where you come from. No one looks at your starting point. Everyone looks at the ending point, right? If you're really in a sprint, you look at the starting point or end point. It's like, you know, we have to look at only the end point. Doesn't matter. Don't look at which company you're going to join first after your engineering. Look at that, which is the company you're going to retire from, which is the company where you're going to develop like, right? This is how you need to think. How do you really retire? That will be amazing to think, right? This is how you need to think for the long term also. At the same time, you need to have short term uh, uh, dreams also, okay? So at the same time, the more importantly, you need to collaborate. As I mentioned, like, you know, the collaboration is key. You need to be rub shoulders with the right people, then even your like your ideas will be valuable. Okay. So what is the AI actually? What is the AI? What is the AI? Any thoughts? What does it do? Computer science. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Technology that mimics human brain. Awesome. You're very near, actually. And fantastic. It's a basically, it's a simulation of human brain, actually, which is compiled or it is, which is executed generally by machines. It's a computer system. You agree, everyone agrees that this is what the simple understanding, right? It also understands and self-corrects also. That is also, it does the AI. Actually, that's the beauty of it. Actually, there are different types of UI. And then we really look at actually how the history of this AI came into picture, actually. In 40s and 50s, it was called as a logic theorist. 
and then also called general problem solver actually. And there are a lot of ways at that point of time actually the AI is going to really transform to human beings and so on and so forth. And 50s and 70s actually a lot of movies came up before that on how AI will transform like science fiction movies like. A lot of movies came up and then people were really excited about this entire phase actually. That's called golden age of AI actually. So then there was an AI winter. There were a lot of skepticism around the AI technology and people were really not able to see the money what they put in. So there was a lot of skepticism and then like you know the, there was um, uh, the ability for mimicking the AI, uh, mimicking the humans was not near at all and this is what happened in 70s and 80s. Then the 80s and the resurgence of AI happened actually that's where the expert system for medical diagnosis, like voice recognition and all come up into picture. Products like Alexa and all started really rising up actually, right? So a lot of um, work happened in that space and then in 1990 and 2020 actually, AI has really like you know, become a big, big, big thing actually. So the, the, the emergence of this was actually started with the data analytics and then like you know, before this lot of work was happening on the data analytics, people collected unwanted data also in the, in the in, the, in that uh, excitement, people don't know now what to do with the data. Now the AI come into picture actually, right? This is how the whole industry. See friends, actually one thing I tell you, whether you are computer science or not, AI is going to be there in every job in the future. If you don't really fall in love with AI, you are, your job will not be taken away by someone else. It will be taken away by the person who, who knows AI, that's all. Do you agree? So this is what the uh, statement from my side, okay? And there's a lot of work is happening in the space, believe it or not. On the left side, you can see the number of startups working on the space. All are having products around AI, but largely they use GPT-4 or chat GPT as a large language model. Or you also have like, you know, the lot of uh, products around like, you know, the text to image models are DALI, stable diffusion or mid journey. Have you heard of all these products actually? Yeah. Oh, okay. So all these products are now integrated. You actually it's become a paid version now. Earlier it was a free version, but still chat GPT of 3.5 is free of cost. You can still start with that actually. That solves all your problem. To be frank, actually today, uh, we, we do a consulting job, right? So 65 to 70% of our job, um, I can say it's synthetic in nature. That means the, no one is really drafting mails. Everyone is really using chat GPT, even in the top companies. People may be saying like, no, it's unethical, blah, 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 blah. But believe it or not, out of Fortune 500 companies, 250 already have signed uh, um, with Microsoft. That means no one wants to really fall back. That's very clear, okay? So uh, what is generative AI then? What is generative AI then? AI, you know, you can train, you can mimic humans, you can also collaborate with AI and do things. What is generative AI? It generates the text or the stories or any images based on uh, references you give it. Can you come once again? Yeah, it uh, generates the pictures or any storytelling based on the few references you give. Okay, fantastic. I can pass on one, one. See, uh, slightly, uh, I'll add to that actually. Um, uh, your good name? Sanjana, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sanjana. I'll add to your point actually. Here, all these days actually, you AI means you need to train. It'll make mistakes. Again, it'll learn from the mistakes. Again, it'll start, like, you know, you need to keep on showing hundreds of apple to tell that it's apple. Tomorrow, so that by mistake it may say, orange also is apple. Then I need to correct that. Oh, surface is different. Color is different. I need to train that again, right? This is what all supervised AI in the past. Have you really observed, actually, in the past, when you're really typing something on Google search, when you first two letters, when you're typing, it'll, it'll complete another two, three sentences based on the people who searched in the past. Have you observed that? Right, that is called auto-completion. You agree? So it has got a minimum memory what someone else has typed in the past, possibly 
X and Y also is searching the same, so that it really puts those, those words in front of you all the time, right? That was only limited memory it had. Today, it could be able to really extend into a paragraphs and then pages. That is what the memory level the, it has really acquired. It can generate new content. It's not about, it can repeat the what you trained. You agree, this was astonishing. No one could think this can do it at this level. All the images I, I have made here in this presentation using generative AI. This is, that means I don't have art background possibly. I have draftsman, I, I, I can draw well, but I am not a learned artist. But I can really present with the pictures which is new, which is only coming in my presentation. Just imagine how it is supporting me. Right? This is what the same opportunity you have. Okay, here it's basically, it refers to the type of artificial intelligence that is able to generate new data or a content such as text, images, or music. Now the score has come in, which is also able to do movies, videos. If you give a prompt, tell a story. If just imagine my, 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 my maybe like, you know, the, my niece or a child of like five years tells me a, a very imaginary story to me if I feed that into the prompt, it will give a movie for her to watch. Can you imagine? This is what the magic which is happening in the world, okay? This chat GPT is basically it's developed based on the transformer architecture, like basically what the data it will transform into uh, um, new data, new data sets actually. Possibly we may be the last generation we have seen the original data. In future, you will see an AI generated one Again, reviewed by the AI, and then finally you have a refine of that actually, right? Possibly we may be the last generation to see the real data actually. Okay, it's also capable of understanding the context and generating a human-like responses in the text input. This is what actually you're chatting with someone and the other side like human. Saying that I, 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 I draw, like I write a draft a paragraph and say, hey, draft the same thing for a fifth grader. It'll draft for a fifth grader. Today we, we chat with a lot of bank bots and all right whether you are 60, 70 years or 80 years or maybe 20 years or 5 years it will interact with the same language because it's a bot tomorrow it can understand who is talking to you and then it can answer accordingly that is the beauty okay so this is a dali basically it converts like you know the open ai uh, like you know into generating the images from the text basically this also is amazing and then you can also use Google Bard also to, to get this kind of images, okay? So democratizing innovation, this is what the understand, un underlining statement here. That means everyone can innovate now. You don't need to be a superstar to really innovate, okay? You can come up with amazing ideas. So one the biggest challenge we have seen in the industry in the last so many years, working with some more than 14 years, working with the companies, the biggest challenge is, uh, the biggest challenge is divergent thinking, get, getting lot more number of ideas on the table. Just imagine, I want to, just imagine mine is a, uh, a business which is a business consulting, so, right, a business consulting on innovation, innovation consulting firm. I want to really have some 100 ideas, how I can really expand my business. 100 ideas you can get within no time. Okay, you can give the context, this is what I wanted to expand. Believe it or not, actually I asked like, no, hey, funnel down to top five ideas from this 100 ideas, which I need to work on. Believe it or not, to learn that five ideas, I spent 15 years in this industry to learn. That is what the democratizing innovation is. Like for example, I may be coming for the city, to this city for first time. With a Google map, I can go to any place in this city, right? You can come to Bangalore for the first time, but still you can feel comfortable as if you know the place, right? So this is how actually the, it is democratizing uh, the, the how Google Maps democratizes the uh, city usage the similar way, like you know that this is democratizing everyone to write good English also, okay? So one is coming with our ideas. Convergent is one of thing, is funneling down. Say, identify only 100 top five ideas to really work on, okay? 
You can go back and then say that, how I want to really become a topper. Give me 10 ideas to become a topper in the next few uh, uh, semester, possibly. It will give 10 ideas. If you really follow, possibly you may become a topper. I'm very sure of that. Because it will give right things to you to really do. You don't need to really ask anyone else. You don't need to go and ask one more topper, how did you really become a topper? Right? It's a more of a low, more like a co-pilot for you, actually. Okay? So what does it do is basically in ideation, one is actually the quality of ideas goes up. Amazing quality of ideas. And also time to evaluate the ideas comes down. Like finally you want to really take up one project, right? End of this five, one week. How to really come up with it? Convert those ideas. Say that, hey, pick up the best three ideas to work on. It will pick up. Okay? This is how you can really identify. And then engaging the collaborative design. Possibly it will ask some question. Again, you ask some more questions. It goes to the next level and next level and next level. This is basically amazing part of the uh, creativity. How do you really say someone is a very creative? Uh, what we, we say is basically the tri association and by association. By association is bringing two different components together and making it one and then making it useful. For example, if I have a cup, someone thought about holding the cup is very hard to hold and then when, it's, when something is hot is there, can I really put a handle to it? They can hold the handle, okay? They can hold the handle. That was basically very near, the novelty is very limited because people could able to think that this is the next invention which can come in. Just imagine someone comes up with a temp temperature sensor and tells that what is the hotness of the uh, coffee or a uh, liquid in the, in the cup. That is something amazing because here bringing three different components together and making it more novel, right? This is how the tri association. Here, I'm looking at virtual reality, sustainability, ag ag sustainable agriculture, and personalized nutrition. I ask these three, three aspects and then make a business, like you know, the uh, business concept around this, and then it created a business uh, uh, model for me. How simple it is, right? So the tri association is the highest level of creativity. If you, if you look at in, in olden temples, actually there is, there is to be a pillar, even in maybe in, in Belur Halebedu you can see this. It's called Yali. In pillars, you have a face of lion, a face of a elephant, body of lion, and tail of crocodile, possibly. Have you seen this in any temples? This is basically one of the oldest architecture. People see that this is the highest level of creativity. Someone could able to integrate three, or maybe the government of Karnataka logo, if you look at, there is a three different animals possible in the logo of uh, Karnataka government. That means highest level of creativity has been brought in. They created a new creature. Okay, this is how that it saves time and don't have. Um, uh, this is how, like you know, the, you can save the time as well as you can also check the feasibility of the idea also. You can give the references of the feasibility, and what all the bottlenecks you have. You try to really look at whether it will pass the feasibility or not also. It can really help you to create a business model also. Okay, and also like an idea evaluation, like Chat GPT and LLM, you can also help you for idea evaluation and integration. I'll give some of the examples of what we, de we designed at Inno Mantra uh, uh, using the inspiration from the, uh, from the nature, okay? This is, um, like, you know, this is, uh, we, we ko Kohalas, we inspired, like, you know, the, this is a sofa inspired by Kohalas. And people asked us, actually, is it available in Amazon or something? This is something new, which, which we created. The inspiration is from Kohalas. Here with a camel, in, like in the car which is inspired by camel, okay? Here you can say hippo tub. The, he, he, hippo, the tub inspired by, like you know, the hippopotamus, you can see this. This is a tiger inspired shoes, okay? This is squid inspired pens. T-shirt which is inspired by birds. Helicopter inspired by spider. Elephant, like, you know, inspired uh, helicopters. This letter bag's actually using butterflies, actually, like, as inspiration. This is b trains, bullet trains inspired by eagle. 
This is a honeybee inspired mugs actually, right? This is panda inspired beds. This will be f funny, right? Like very nice to use that in, in, in. And this is a Fanta fly actually. This has got a three aspect actually, the chocolate, elephant and butterfly coming together. Right? It's not very novel. Just imagine if you are a cho chocolate manufacturer, these ideas will be useful or not. Yeah. Amazing, right? This is how you can really look at. This is a tortoise and Scorpio coming together, okay, for a car. So what I mean to say is like, you know, the generative AI is going to really help you, assist you to amplify your design capabilities and innovation capabilities, okay? Learning this, the art of this earlier the better, okay? Uh, with this actually, I, do you have any questions? I have another some time to, to run, actually, if I have any questions. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. So any questions, I'll be very happy to take up. If not, I can run small, small, one more portion of this. You want to break for the tea or something like that? Or at four? No, no, fine. Fine. Have any questions? How many of you are using regularly chat GPT? Okay. Do you see that your, your productivity has gone up by how much percentage? 100? 80%. 80 percent. Very good. Very good. Very good. So, how many of you have not tried chat GPT at all? Please raise the hand. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. Very good. So I mean to say, go back kind of home and then start using from today itself, okay? You can write a best poem to your friend, okay? You can be a poet also. You can be an essay writer also. You can write like an essay, like, an, like, like a champion, like, like Shakespeare, right? So uh, especially students from like, you know, the tier two, tier three cities, the biggest challenge is English. I think that solves this problem actually, okay? So all that you need to really build that mastery is like, you know, the, the communication, like, you know, the, even that also it helps. You can send a video, which is, a, which is, a, the beauty is you can translate also. You can tran just ask the same paragraph to get translated into Kannada or Tamil or Telugu. It will translate into Tamil and Telugu also. Okay. So. You don't need to, you really go out of chat GPT at all, actually, okay? So, um, do you want to really continue with something or uh, up to four o'clock? We have another 10, 15 minutes, is it? I'll be happy, friends, actually, I have another 10 minutes to run this. Uh, please let me know, like, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be very happy. It could be uh, um, on anything on innovation, anything on startup, anything on, like, you know, the, what we discussed from the morning. Please, please go ahead, please go ahead. Give a mic to Ashwin. Here, here, pass on here. If someone is there having a question, please feel free. Only crying baby will get milk. Okay. In the meanwhile, me meanwhile actually go to uh, LinkedIn Inno Mantra and like us also. That is also one, one request I can have from my side. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sir, how ChatGPT will grab NLP processing? Uh, see, the thing is, um, it's evolving, actually. Like, no, it's evolving. If Even if you ask, um, like, you know, Sam Alton, actually, you will not able to, Altman, you are not able to give the answer to it. What he guarantees one thing is, he doesn't know even what level it may really take up. Possibly the next level of, like, you know, the bilateral agreements and all will happen in this space. It's as good as, like, you know, you're inventing an atom bomb only, to be frank. That is the level, actually, to be frank. Because people don't even know, like, what, what, what it could able to produce. Just imagine sitting in one corner in, in Bangalore, I could able to generate so many images. Okay, I'll also possibly share the link uh, with... Uh, 
Dr. Shivana ji, so that it can be shared with all the participants here. Um, if you just type uh, generative AI and Lokesh in Harvard Business Review, you can read that article also. It's a tutorial article. Y by reading that article, you can also start using ChatGPT. Okay, so that is one you can uh, just type generative AI and Lokesh, you'll be able to get the first article. Okay, yeah. Anything else? Any Sir. question? Yeah. So now uh, is recently is uh, divine AI, so it's evolved. So comparatively, uh, ChatGPT is a 0 0.5 percent. So what about that uh, divine AI? Can See, um, competition will come in. Actually, it's uh, right now. It's coming from every direction now. Okay, it's still it's not merging actually. That is the level today. It will touch every field. Even design, mechanical designs actually, like re regenerative designs are happening today. Just give the prompt, it will give the design to you. Give you a requirement, put the specification, it'll drive the component for you actually. That is how the level is actually today. Anyone else? Ah, please go ahead. Go ahead. You can pass on the mic if you want. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, as we know that AI is created by humans, so we'll get to know that we should scare a AI. So it is true or not? Y Why we should? We, well, we should get scared to the AI or not? Yes, sir. You should not, according to me, right? Because I tell you, like you know, the, um, when I started my career, actually, we used to use drafting boards for drawings, engineering drawings huge boards in the design department. Every, even a stenciling a drawing, you should take one week for me actually. Okay, if, uh, that is a level we used to. The emergence of AutoCAD has transformed the drafting itself at that point of time, drafting and designing. The similar way today, it is democratizing. You don't need to, to become a draftsman, at least it used to take three to five years to become a good draftsman. With, with AutoCAD, you can become a draftsman in, in six months, right? Same thing is happening with generative AI. You don't need to fear because it's going to be aiding you. It's more than removing you actually. You need to learn the new techniques to stay abreast with the new technologies. That is what you need to build. I told like, no, the AI will not take your job. The person who knows AI next to you, he will take your job. You got it? Thank you. Fantastic, good question. Anyone else want to, from this side? MBA students are sitting here, right? Yeah, please go ahead. Is Chat GPT an advantage or a disadvantage for us? Students, it's a super, super, super advantage. As long as you write physical exams in the end of the year, you should not really bother too much about it. Because it really helps you to articulate well. The biggest challenge you have is articulating, right? The problem is not with the technical capabilities or your mental capabilities to really solve the problem. The problem is how we can really put it on the paper. Right. Today, that solves your problem most of the top problems, right? So you should not really like, you know, the worry about the chat GPT eating away uh, your space. It's going to aid you in a big way. As long as you're writing a physical exam, should not be worrying about. That is what actually the thing is, you, you lose resil resilient, uh, the resilience actually. Most of the time what happens when, when automation comes up, people lose the real skill, right? For example, if you say one day if I don't have a Google map, I, I may possibly, I may not able to reach home also sometimes, we don't know, right? Because we got used to so much, right? So it should not come to the ground zero. I'll tell you a simple example, like you know, the, when, when I was there in Chennai during this recent flood, um, our area was quite okay, but actually I was not able to travel by two kilometers also because the entire road was blocked. 
and if i want to buy something no one is accepting the digital payments everyone is accepting cash i don't even have a cash with me right so with a great difficulty through some friend i got some cash to just to really manage the day to day requirements so it's basically your 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 efficiency should not hamper your resilience efficiency is good but efficiency should not if you are intelligent smart you are becoming super smart or super intelligent if you are average it will make you little intelligent if you are dud dud still it will make you a intelligent to really become a super super intelligent you also need to have intelligence along with it both coming together is what the big output you can bring in right if i say chat gpt give me a presentation i'm going to gm university on on generative ai it will not able to produce as simplistic as possible actually right so it's basically a human is required to really behind it to make that interesting right you agree fantastic good question thank you sir thank you thank you anything else yeah please please pass on go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead sir i don't have any question sir only passing the mic huh? passing the ball is happening there okay. actually ha huh. yeah go ahead go ahead yeah, or uh, uh, don't be passing please uh, respect the time so much so many people are sitting over here yeah please go go ahead Uh, fine i think thank you so much i really appreciate hope you enjoyed the the first two sessions uh, for the day and then for some learning i am available you can get connected to me in linkedin uh, our company name is ino mantra uh, we help large companies so if you are really interested any time i'll be very happy to connect to some people if it if you really do want to do some projects or anything or some other way i can be of help to you if so can just drop me a line in linkedin okay thank you so much i wish you good luck and then come out with a flying colors and then make india great with flying colors thank you so much thank you
Uh, thank you, Rokesh, sir, for your uh, informative session right from the morning. You have uh, struggled a lot in order to motivate us and our students. Thank you so much for that. Um, now I request. Yeah, yes. Uh, now I request uh, MBA students from GMU and MBA students from uh, VTU uh, to accompany here. The people who are joining us virtually, MBA VTU and MBA uh, GMU, should uh, personally come here to GM Halama Auditorium. Your session, uh, especially dedicated for you, is about to start once you reach here. And in case if uh, space is there, other students who are interested can also accompany. Thank you. Attention please, all the virtual students, MBA program from GMU and the VTU should uh, come here at uh, GM Halama Auditorium. Thank you. <laughs> 